If I want to succeed in life, I need to realize success in this lifetime is closely connected to the success of the hereafter. When you are bothered about what's going to happen to you after you are going to die, you will be able to prepare correctly and live a life of contentment. Unfortunately, many of us consider materialism a source of success. When I can afford this car, this house, this watch, this phone, these accessories, this perfume, these holidays, these clothes, then I've succeeded. That is temporary, my brothers and sisters, that success is very, very limited. Five times a day you hear the screamer or the mu'adhin call at the top of his lungs, Hayya ala al-falah, come towards success. You can't deny that the entirety of religion is focused upon success. There's not another system on the face of this earth in which someone comes out five times a day to tell you, come to success. Because happiness and contentment is achieved primarily by understanding Allah's plan. By understanding you have to worship Allah alone. You have to build a relationship with the one whom you're going to go back to one day helplessly. The day that your wealth and your children will not help except for the one who has a pure, a clean, a healthy heart that is free of sickness and ailment and disease. And what is that ailment if anyone has worshipped or associated partners besides Allah, with Allah, they have faltered. If you have a very successful businessman, a really successful person on earth, and they have a story, they've written about their lives, many of us would know parts of that story. What about Allah? When Allah has told you that I have sent to you the most powerful message, and that is my word. Many of us have not bothered to try to look into the meanings of the word of Allah. And for that reason, we sway. I promise you, if you were to make an effort with the word of Allah, Allah will come closer to you more than you can imagine. If you have difficulties with your health, with your wealth, with your social life, with your financial, economic life, pick up the Quran and start becoming close to the word of Allah. When you show dedication, you will notice the calmness in your heart, in your mind, in your system, and you will become happy with what Allah has apportioned for you. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, when you surrender to the plan of Allah and you understand that whatever Allah does, even if we perceive it to be negative, it's not negative, it's actually an opportunity and it's a positive and it will bring you closer to Allah. That's the reason why we have difficulty and hardship because if we did not, we would not have been close to Allah. Many of us, we are far from Allah when we are in days of ease. The minute something happens and there is a problem, we say, oh Allah, for the first time in your life, you are saying, oh Allah, where was that all the time? Allah says, we loved you enough to give you a problem, to be able to make you realize and understand you have a creator. So you raised your hands. So you said, Oh Allah. So you came close to us. Even if you lost your entire life, the fact that you came close to us, it was actually a bargain. Psychologists say that the most productive emotion is the emotion of gratitude. You know, if in your heart you feel grateful, you will be very productive. You will be at the top of your game. You will be at your best. When the Rasul was alive, it was in the desert. Now the desert is very hot. The water is very scarce. With limited water, food is very scarce. With food, limited food, you're hungry, wealth is very scarce. And when the uh, people from Mecca migrated to Medina, there wasn't much shelter either, because when you see the Ashab of Sufa, they used to be sitting, you know, sleeping outside. So, yet the Prophet taught these people with such little physical wealth that before you wake up, 
or as you wake up you say alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi an-nushur thank you ya rabb for giving me life after having taken it from me last night into you was my return not just wealth life again can you imagine what it did to his psyche and then he goes to the bathroom he finishes what does he say alhamdulillah thank you ya rab for taking away the filth from me he eats alhamdulillah he drinks alhamdulillah his whole life was gratitude and psychologists say to be at the top of your game as in uh, be a more successful version of yourself you need to be grateful do you see when I tell you that the deen was designed to make you successful? And ha have a look at this. I studied the life of successful according to, you know, human definitions. You know, heads of industry, entrepreneurs, leaders of big institutions, prime ministers. I searched and researched their lives and I found certain traits you know they are all early raisers they wake up very early all of them almost unanimous they wake up and they meditate or they read what they call motivational texts to inspire them for the rest of the day to you know to pick them up what do you do or what did the Dean prescribe for you to do in the morning after you have said, you know, your hamd, you wake up, you do your wudu, you stand in salah and fajr is long recitations of the most motivational text man is ever to know the divine word of Allah himself. And then you sit and do your wird, your adhkar. Try this for those of you who haven't. Try to sit and do your adhkar for 30 minutes. See what it does to you for the rest of the day. The deen was made to give you the best of this life and the best of the next. You want to be successful? Obey Allah and obey the, the Rasul. Follow the path that they put you on. You, you can't help but be successful follow the mannerisms the the etiquettes the emotional intelligence the adab the manners the characteristics with which the prophet guided you you can't help but be successful and success as our sheikh said is not money muslims real success ultimate success is at the time of death I want to mention a story with you of a person who lived on the obedience of Allah and his prophet and I want to highlight his utterance at the point of death. His name is Amir ibn Fuhayra, was the freed slave of Abu Bakr Siddiq. But he was loyal, so he stood in the service of Deen and to serve and help Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. In the day of Hijrah, the pretext of it was that tribes of the Quraysh, all of them decided to come and attack the Prophet at one go. Jibreel came, Ya Rasul, migrate. So the Prophet wasallam chose to leave Mecca and come to Medina. But Amr ibn Fuhayra in this difficult moment stood firm. So he was one of the very few people who knew the Prophet is migrating. He was the one who went and got the camels. He was the one that took food to the bottom of the uh, mountain to take it to the Prophet when he was in, you know, in Ghar al-Thawr. He was the one that brought um, Abdullah ibn Urayqa to them. He, you know, he was, he was the, the person standing in this difficulty and Allah blessed them to migrate with the Rasul and, and he migrated around the same time. Years passed, he's in Medina now, safety. He's become one of the most learned of Muslims. So a, a person came, a chief of one of the local tribes. He said, oh prophet, can you send us some teachers to teach my people? So the prophet sent ashab, teachers, to go and teach new Muslims. 
Amidst the group is Amr ibn Fuhaira. As they travel to the tribe of this chief, on the way they camp at night. So they're busy with their campfires. A couple of them have gone and taken the camels out to graze. And as they camp, they get ambushed. So the two or the three that had gone to graze the animals, they came back and they saw massacre. So as you can imagine, emotions override, he screams, he's, he tried to avenge his friends and they don't want to hurt him, they've tied him up. You know, they capture him. So one of them said, come. Look at the dead. They ask him, is there anyone here missing? He said, yes, there's one person missing. So he said, who is he? So he said, Amr ibn Fuhaira. So he said, who was he amidst you? He said, the best of us. So he said, come. And he took him to a man who was dazed. His name is Jabbar, not Muslim. He says, this is Jabbar. Jabbar, tell him what happened. So Jabbar said, I came from behind him, behind Amr ibn Fuhaira, and I got my spear and I dug it in his back. And then he smiles and he says, I succeeded by the Lord of the Kaaba. And he goes, he went up until he disappeared in the clouds. So his friend said, he goes, the angels took him. I succeeded by the Lord of the Kaaba. Because he lived a life on the obedience of Allah and on the obedience of the Rasul. And when death came, however it came, he was successful. And the greatest success, my dear brothers, as described by Allah and his Prophet, the one who traverses over Jahannam and enters Jannah, indeed he is successful. And the way to do it, whoever obeys Allah and obeys the Rasul, whoever lives a life of a true Muslim with clear understanding of the deen, indeed he has become successful in this life and in the next. May Allah Rabbul Izzah grant me a new success in this life and in the next.